Hey guys, Chris and the Ultimate Recycler. We have a clock movement on the bench here ticking away, which you may have seen the video where I repaired the main spring on this one. It was about three or four weeks back. It's been clamped in a vise here on my bench and it's been running really well. Now it's time to have a look at the case and see what we can do with it. Here's the case that this clock came out of. It's a 1940s Art Deco English made uh, clock. It's uh, pretty dusty, it's a bit rough, um, there's no real damage, but it has been in a shed for a long time. Let's spin it around. Oh, before we do that, let's have a look at the face. It's uh, not too bad, it's a little bit scuffed in places, but there's nothing broken. The hinges are okay, and the hinges on these clocks often break, but this one's good. The finish is a little bit dodgy here, so we'll have a look at what we're going to do with that. I also noticed that these mouldings... Um, a little bit they're not loose but that one's quite good but there's a few gaps in places so i don't know if we're going to do much with that i don't want to spend a lot of time on it because these clocks really aren't worth a lot but now that i've got the movement going uh, it would be nice to have the clock at least a bit more presentable so i can put it in the shop and hopefully sell it so as you can see it's quite dusty but there's no real damage the back door is okay a little bit of the finish has worn off in places and there are some scratches on top so hopefully we'll be able to move something set on that and really gouged it a bit so what we're going to do is try and just fix it up without fully restoring it i don't want the thing to look brand new um, you got to remember this is a veneer over a plywood and the veneer is quite thin i don't think it's actually got any chips but it is a little bit worn around the high points and if you try and sand this, you'll probably go through the veneer and the ply grain underneath is not very attractive and it's really going to look terrible. So even though it has a bit of age crackling to it, I think that's part of its story, that white mark should come off. Um, and I'm more than happy for it not to look brand new. Um, you can see some of the original finish there is actually totally gone. Now it's probably a shellac type finish and I have had success cleaning these up just with some really fine steel wool and methylated spirits um, but it's not going to take all these marks off but what we're going to do with this is that i've got a new product to try called restorer finish uh, it's a howard product and i've seen some youtube videos where it actually does a pretty good job and as you can see on that little table on the front obviously they're going to make it look good on the front of the can but it's removing marks and scratches and bringing the timber back to a nice even rich mellow color and that's actually all I want to do with this clock. We will clean up the, uh, it's probably nickel plated bezel around the, the door. Uh, we'll give the glass a bit of a clean. It's actually a domed glass, so it's the original glass. The uh, nickel plating should clean up well. I'm not going to touch the dial too much because I don't want to risk marking the numbers. So I don't mind it showing a bit of age, but we will clean the nickel plating up. We'll try this restorer finish. Uh, and I don't think there's much I can do with this actually because it's looks like it's it actually touches in some parts and not others. A bit of fluff on there. I think I'll just leave that as it is. They're not loose. There's no sense trying to take them off and get them to fit neater because, as I said, I don't want it to look new. So what I'll do is I'll just wipe it over perhaps um, just to get rid of the dust for a start. And we'll have a look and see what this restorer finish can do to it. And I think I might take the door off then we can give it a good clean up as well okay let's take the door off with a suitably sized screwdriver now these are going to be fairly tight i think there we go now if you're undoing screws it's always well worth getting a good size screwdriver the right size with a nice square blade and when you're undoing them, you really need to push a lot of pressure in that way. I know it's pretty basic for most of you, but if you haven't had a lot of experience at undoing things and you are going a bit of an angle and you don't put the pressure, all you're going to do is chew the middle out of the screw and because most of these screws are brass and they're very soft. So these are all coming out fine. And it'll just make the door a lot easier to clean up with it off. And hopefully you don't lose any of these screws. They're very short. If 
there we go so that will be nickel plated brass as i said and i think that will clean up fine and i'll show you how i'm going to clean that up in a tick let's find all our screws now i use these little meat trays being a recycler of course uh, we buy meat in the supermarket in these trays and rather than put them in the recycle bin they're great for holding little screws in fact these screws actually sit in the little dimples so there's much less chance of them being knocked out and uh, i've got quite a stack of these and they're really handy for parts okay let's have a better look at the front of this clock you can see the hinges there i'm not going to take them off the timber in fact it looks like they actually push through the timber and they might attach inside but that's fine i can clean them up well there the dial i'm just maybe going to wipe it over with a bit of i'm not sure i might try a bit of methylated spirits um, which is going to remove any grime and it shouldn't affect the lettering at all we'll try just really carefully in one spot first there's a little slot here which is a there's a lever there that you can turn the chimes on and off so it says chime and silent and there's a fast slow lever at the top a lot of clocks don't have that a lot of clocks you just simply adjust the pendulum and if we look in this one at the actual clock the pendulum that's on it is adjustable as well so by altering the length of the weight you will adjust the time but the lever here is what goes through and that will actually vary the speed anyway enough on the clock let's try and clean up this face first so I've just got some methylated spirits here I find it's good for taking fingerprints and residual marks from fingers off things and it evaporates very quickly so it's not going to leave any residue and as I said I don't want the thing to look brand new so scratches and little marks are kind of part of its age part of its story so I think that's going to just freshen it up a bit it's not hurting the paint on the numbers or anything and it will remove all the dust as well okay just looking at these hinges that one's pivoting i think there's just a nut on the back of these so i might actually undo that and then we can clean the hinges up a bit better let's have a look in here oh uh, yes we can see there's a nut there so that's all that holds the back of the hinge so we might as well take them off there we go little specialized hinge so that'll just enable us to clean them up a bit better and it'll also help us clean the case without these things being in the road okay i've moved to the main shed for this because uh, the the safety warnings say that there's um volatile fumes i've also gone for gloves um, it does just say avoid prolonged contact with skin but we might as well avoid any if we can and it's just a matter of using a cloth and wiping it on and i'm starting on the back just to make sure it's not going to do anything weird and just working it onto the timber and oh it's got a fair smell to it so i am in a well ventilated area i wouldn't do this in an enclosed room that's actually really given it a good finish already it looks like it, it colors it a little bit in fact this one is actually a golden oak color but um I don't think the colour is going to make a huge difference, but the fact that this stuff, it must melt the shellac a little bit. And then there's also perhaps some oils and things that fill in the scratches. But that's come up great there. So I'm fairly confident that it's going to make it look nice on the front. And I think you have to work it around for a while. Yes, if it keeps that gloss, it's going to look magnificent. All right, let's try the top where we've got these scratches. So this will be interesting. See if it gets rid of the scratches. Well, it certainly darkens them up a bit. Now this stuff seems to be working very well. Uh, the trouble is it's not going to replace a finish that's actually missing and there's places on this case where the, the original finish is pretty much gone but it does blend it all together pretty well and it gives it a nice gloss that 
that actually stays. It doesn't dry out or it doesn't look to sort of go um, matte after a while. It does take some marks off. I don't know if it'll take this white off. Uh, pretty much. Look at that. That's not bad. The white's all gone. That's impressive. Uh, but as the as you can see on the top, there's patches where there's finish that's actually missing and there's scratches and it has coloured them, but it doesn't make them disappear. Now, I could have used. Apparently, you can use a four zero. 4-0 um, steel wool which um, will actually help smooth out the scratches but uh, I haven't got any 4-0 at the moment and you shouldn't use any coarser steel wool when you're finishing woodwork but I think this is going to be going to be great it's really bringing the front up nice I'm trying not to get too much on the dial because I'm not sure what it'll do to the dial It is hiding a lot of scratches, and I think it's going to be an awesome finish for this clock. So I'll just finish going over this, and then we're going to look at cleaning up the uh, the door and the nickel-plated bezel. Okay, I've finished the case. I'm just using some Silvo. Now, I did say this was nickel-plated. I think it might be chromed, and this clock, probably around 1940s, you start to get a lot of chrome, whereas in the 20s and earlier, it's usually nickel plated. So the 30s, you can get a bit of each. I think this is chromed rather than nickel. But either way, the Silvo is a good polish. It's um, a little bit more gentle than Brasso and certainly more gentle than than fine steel wool. Um, and it's, it's cleaning it up beautifully. The chrome or the finish, whether it's nickel or chrome, is in great condition. And I've already done a couple of sides and you can see how how um, almost mirror finish that is cleans it up very well so once i finish this it's obviously got a bit on the glass we'll get some glass cleaner out i've already put the hinges back on the clock we can assemble the door and then we can put the movement back in and our job's finished now to put the screws back in the door i've got a couple in and they are very fiddly sometimes a magnetic screwdriver is a pain sometimes it's really handy so i've magnetized this screwdriver by dragging it the same way across the magnet then I can pick up these tiny little screws actually put them in the slot and they'll stay there and it makes it a lot easier to um, to do these up into the hinges as simple as that so I'll do the last one and the door came up really nice I just cleaned the glass with metho methylated spirits and uh, that's all we need. So the whole clock's starting to look really flash. The movement is still ticking away in my other room. I'll bring that out shortly and we'll put it all together. Just tighten these screws up now. There we go. Look at that. Beautiful. Okay. Let's get the movement. Oh, I was, no, I was going to show you. Um, if you don't want your screwdriver magnet, magnetized anymore, take it back and forward and sideways. And now it shouldn't be magnetized. No, can't feel any attraction at all. Okay, let's go and get the movement. Here we go. I've taken the pendulum off. Now I haven't knocked I've purposely not knocked any of these brackets so they should line up with the holes in the case just a matter of getting it in the door and then allowing it to sit in the right spot and we'll just turn it up and make sure the keyholes are lining up and not only the keyholes but also the spindle where the hands go they're a bit fiddly to get in the right position sometimes, but once we've got the spindle through, we can lay it back over and secure the movement in place. Okay, guys, clock's all finished. It's back together and it's running and we're looking at the back of it at the moment. 
but uh, come and have a better look and I'll show you how well it came up. I showed you the back first because the finish is in the best condition on the back. It clearly hasn't been in the light and it hasn't crackled as much and there's no veneer missing or anything. And this product, Restorer Finish, is really good for a situation where the finish is perhaps just a little bit tired, but that's come up beautiful. However, it will not remove scratches that are deep. You can see though it has left a gloss on that, which is pretty good. So I am pretty happy with the product and it's exactly what I wanted for this clock. Let's come around and have a look at the front. How's that look, hey? It's a million bucks on what it was. It's certainly got some age and like all of us as we get older our finish crackles a bit and we get a bit of wear and you know you're not going to replace missing uh, lacquer or missing shellac or whatever the finish is but it does blend it in pretty well and it's exactly the look I wanted for this clock it's come up fantastic it's ticking away nicely there I'm going to wind it forward and for those of you that haven't really had much to do with antique clocks and mechanical movements let's watch it chime now that i've got it all together so let's just open the door and we'll finish this video up with the chimes you can see it all in there i've put these gong these are the the chime rods i've put them back in the hammers are lined up it's running beautifully i'll just reach around hang on i'll have to just open the door okay and we'll wind it forward to 11 and you can watch the mechanism operate And that will continue to count 11 gongs to indicate that it's 11 o'clock. The hammers perhaps aren't quite lined up properly. They're probably a little bit worn on the pads. You can adjust them and purely just by bending the rods you can get a bit of a better sound out of them. But there we go. One lovely English chiming clock. Uh, we've repaired the spring as you saw in the other video. If you haven't, uh, I did put the link up before. I'll put it underneath. And it's running lovely. It's going to run for about a week. It's an eight-day movement. So once a week you would wind it. And I'm going to put that in the shop now. I think it's probably... These things aren't worth what they used to be worth. I think, though, I would probably put about 175 on this in the shop. Uh, being a Westminster chime, it seems to they seem to have a little bit more value. Um, 20 years ago, it might have made 300. You know, things have dropped off a lot in value on these things. But it's a beautiful clock, it's been serviced, it's been repaired. We've tricked the case up a little bit so it looks the part and I'm sure it will sell quickly in the shop. So there you go, thanks for watching guys. Hope you got a little bit out of that. We'll catch you in the next video. Bye for now.